Bungalow Bill here, and welcome back to From the Depths. So when I was working on the vivisector, I was really thinking, man, it sure is hard to ram vehicles. It would be really nice if there was an easier way to hit them with my laser cutter. And, you know, my thought process was, well, I can just make a bigger laser cutter and I don't have to bring my ship to them anymore. I can bring my laser cutter to their ship. And my thought was, well, I'll make a really heavy vehicle like a battleship or something, and it'll just swing a sword that's like a kilometer long. I mean, if the ship's heavy enough, the reaction forces really don't matter. However, there is a device that gets rid of all reaction forces, the docking station. Alternatively, I could have used a fortress because, well, fortresses don't move, so they can swing a really large item, but there are advantages to using the docking station. So I have made a Twin Guard themed vehicle. In their vein, it's a base with a docking station, and then the real craft is on that docking station. If you're wondering why it's wiggling, that's actually because I noticed that missiles are pretty good at hitting it if it doesn't wiggle. And this makes it much more survivable. It actually makes the the base of the sword pretty hard to hit as well. If you notice that the steam drills in the blade of the sword aren't connected to each other, that's a visual bug that happens after a certain length. So actually, I'm not sure if I'm getting any further in a meaningful way. This is how large it is. It's over 600 meters long. And... Well, it's, it's, it's bullshit. It really is. It's why I've named... Oh, I've, I named the blade, they call me the blade. I named the base uh, the Spirit of the Twin Guard, because this is absolutely the Spirit of the Twin Guard. The actual blade, very heavy armor cost. Firepower is about a third of the vivisector. This doesn't just destroy things. These are also expensive, these steam drills. Um, actually, by the time they get passed around here, they don't take kinetic damage anymore from ramming. So this could all be heavy armor, and it would be cheaper and more durable. I might do that at some point, but it's functional enough the way it is. If I look inside of the base, um, there are some engines to get it going, some AI so that it can move and see things, a breadboard that controls the blade. It makes it wiggle if there's no enemy. If there's an enemy within 550 meters, it points the blade directly at it. Basically, just takes away the rotation of the vehicle, and then deals with the fact that the docking station is pointing up instead of forwards, so that there's a little bit of misalignment there, and then converts everything into polar coordinates for the docking station, and moves that around. So the base is otherwise empty. The armor scheme is absolute garbage. Um, on the handle, the armor scheme's actually fine. Like, this is a this part is better built than the base, and um, lots of repair units because that's the twin guard for you. I don't know what else to say about that. So let's let's just take a look at some easy fights for this first. This is not as consistent as you might hope, and um, it's questionable how it does. These lasers are very charge based or very um, recharge based rather than initial charge based. And they should probably be the opposite. I should probably, without changing the cost of this that much, I could stretch this a bit further and like triple its static charge. This thing would be way better. Because I can get all of these lasers all the way through an enemy vehicle in the first game tick, it doesn't seem to waste damage the way other laser cutters do. So building this like the other laser cutters was a bit of a mistake. So they're having a little bit of trouble hitting the sword, which is mostly what they aim for. We're not going to get exactly in the enemies, one, because of detection error, and two, because I intentionally moved this sword up and down related to the enemy to try to cut through them. So this is how it is at anti-air, which is very good. So one of the reasons that I went for the docking station is actually because they took away the wobble in the docking station. You can still see it's, it jiggles a little bit sometimes and is a little bit jarring. It's okay because... Um, the stability of this object on the docking station does not matter in the tiniest. I don't think we took damage, I'll repair it anyway. I also am giving it infinite materials, although it has a lot. Um, the blade holds more than it looks like, and probably more than it needs to. I should turn those 
the space from those materials into laser storage and then put those materials in the empty space in the base. Although there's currently a very large benefit to the fact that I don't have to carry any of this weight. It just doesn't exist as far as the base is concerned. Which, you know, maybe they should do something about. So this just uses the, um, I think, circle at a distance AI, but with no minimum approach angle. So it's, it's hard to hit this blade. If they do hit it and they do break it, or it dies from explosive damage, uh, it's game over. This vehicle doesn't do anything anymore. The steam drills in this aren't even powered because they don't do anything. So yeah, you can see it just instantly teleports between the two positions. Also, um, this thing doesn't get any momentum imparted to it, or at least it gets reset because of the docking station. So it just kind of pushes the enemy around like it doesn't weigh anything. I could probably make this vehicle kill enemies by just ramming them directly into the bottom instead. So we did a lot of damage. Fortunately, our blade didn't get severed. We're retargeting too much to get a clean slice right now. And off we go. Don't think we really took any damage. It, it just kind of missed all of its shots. I guess more explosive enemies like the crossbones. Um, our, our chance of actually killing it is pretty low. It's almost 100% to sever the blade. The other thing is that these are fairly unprotected. I could put lamb's nodes in, I could protect them better in other ways, but if an enemy shoots at us while the blade is pointing directly towards them, there's a very good chance it's just gonna hit those and ruin our day. They do get repaired, but the crossbones anti-aircraft fire is good enough to keep repeatedly taking these out as they get repaired and they never fire. So, not great. Let's look at a slightly chunkier ship. This is actually starting to get into our price range. This is the sort of thing that should actually be able to fight back. Of course, first it needs to hit the sword. Again, if it can hit the blade in both steam drills, separate them both, the fight's just over. The base can repair them, but it can only repair them one connected block at a, at a time, so it takes forever. And about to get within 550 meters, and here we go. So it keeps retracting every time it pushes the enemy past 550 meters. This is good because it makes it way harder for it to put a shot into the laser cavities. And see, our damage, our damage could be better. Oh, I also didn't put any um, angle restrictions. We will absolutely lose ourselves. You know, I did put a fair amount of time into this craft, but there are there are a few things I didn't do. Right, so this is. This is just fantastic. This is absolutely what the Twin Guard want to be doing to other craft. And as far as I can tell from the Twin Guard rules, this is absolutely legal. You can do this in in Neater, right? This is this is fair dinkums. Uh, we might be exceeding block limits for a lot of reasonable Twin Guard craft and maybe volume limits as well, but that's really it. Um, this is this is allowed. This docking station garbage is totally totally fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, the repair unit spam totally fine. Laser cutters might break twin guard rules. I don't know. They kind of use all the weapons. I don't remember what our target priority is. We should just ruin all of these vehicles. Like, this should just be the best anti-air in the game with good AI. Because we can retarget instantly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is this is fair and balanced. Uh, we're, we're appearing to have some technical difficulties right now. I'm not, I'm not putting auto detection to one though. Our detection is questionable. It's really, really bad in some directions. I didn't spend the most time optimizing it. It's very good directly above our vehicle. Um, mostly because we really only care about angular error and I have two coincidence range finders pointing upwards. There is good forward detection that's hidden behind these planar shields. Okay, it's not good, but it's good enough. Then there's some stuff um, 
what is it, wireless snoopers inside the body, and then these guys, and there's not really much else. Oh, little holiday. I'll fix that before the Steam Workshop upload. So, it's fine, but it could be it could be way better optimized. The other thing is, questionably, the sword itself could have the detection, because you only really need to know the enemy precisely when you're pointing the blade at them. So if it had really good detection in the direction of the blade, um, you know, be pretty good that way. So, I mean. That's that's really it for this vehicle. I should I should still battle something else. I'm not sure what I want it to be. Um, you know, when it comes down to it, as cheesy as this craft is, it's not that good. I could think of other places I could go with this if you could do melee damage with this weapon. You could also optimize this to have way more damage so it just annihilates things. This craft just isn't that optimized. It's really, it's really more about the feeling that you get when you use it than the actual effectiveness. I'm, I'm really sure that this is what Nick Smarts was imagining when he came up with From the Depths. And I, for one, am glad that I've gotten to experience it. Oh, we can't see underwater targets very well, can we? Especially if this enemy has lost most of its ability to send out signal. Yeah, we don't see them at all. Well, anyway, I I really enjoyed building building this craft, and... I hope you've enjoyed seeing what it can do. As always, I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I'll see you in the future.